What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one I want to talk about what's going on with SPY and a couple more tickers, break down the technicals we're looking and talk about some very important developments on the charts. And before I break any devil's information, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and this offer ends very soon. Anyways, now let's break down what's going on with the charts of the market. Right now, when it comes to the economic calendar, I just want to remind you guys that on Monday, there's going to be no day trading because it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's going to be a national holiday, so it's not going to be trading on Monday. We'll be back with normal trading starting on Tuesday, which means next week is going to be a very short week. It's going to be a lot more chill, so hopefully you guys are ready for that. Hopefully you guys are prepared. Uh, I don't know if anyone has plans for the weekend, but I, I definitely don't have plans this weekend so far, so hope you guys have a good time. Now I just want to talk about the charts, how they're looking thus far. So... Generally, what happens, especially as we approach this weekend, we tend to see the market sell off a bit like right before. Uh, we didn't really see that. SPY was kind of just stationary, very, very frozen, getting very, very tight. And we we have been selling off a bit during the after hours, but it's very, very minor. So what I would say is that SPY technically had this base right here. So just a couple of days ago, we saw SPY come down to 472. And then it, it formed this base down here, right? And we've been uptrending since. So we're technically on an uptrend. Uh, but we're going to be watching to see if we try to maintain this uptrend from here. So we'll be watching this yellow trend line because if we hold this, there's a potential bullish setup that could be developing. If we hold this trend line, if we keep continuing to uptrend, you could even adjust this just a little bit. Sometimes moves like this happen where you have to make the small adjustment. Uh, but basically, if we're bullish, okay, you want to see something like this where we kind of like test 478 again and again and again. You guys can see we're forming a wedge here. See this nice looking wedge? A, uh, a very, very nice looking bullish wedge. Break out of this. 480 could be our target before we come back down. But 480 is where we have some tight resistance. So we'll be watching if that ends up being a move. But once again, this is a potential setup for the upside if we hold this support going into next week. If you want to be bearish, however, you don't want to see this trend line basically hold. You want to see it kind of break this and kind of flop. And then you could interpret this as kind of like a, you know, a diamond reversal. That's like one way you could look at this. Uh, we need to see this thing basically lose 475 though and close below that or hold below that. Then we're going to be looking for more potential downside. We haven't quite done that. If you look at today, we held above the 475 area very nicely. I need to see this thing hold below 475, even close below it. And we're going to be looking for a bigger drop after that. If we lose 475 for a bigger dump, we're going to be looking for this thing to basically approach the lows that we made. I would say it was like on Thursday. Uh, so watch that very, very carefully and we'll see how it goes from there. I also wanted to add that when it comes to SPY on the four hour time frame, uh, on the four hour, we have a very, very nice looking, you could interpret this kind of like as a slanted head and shoulders. I wouldn't really promise that though, because I don't really solely trade based off these. Uh, but if this were to turn, right, because we're starting to flip on the MACD, uh, it is possible we come back down to the 20 EMA right here at 475 and retest this. So I could see that happening. If we lose that, I would turn more bearish. So I'd be watching this very carefully to see if that ends up being the case. For now, it's very indecisive, so it's hard to predict exactly how this is going to go. Whether we get one more push up before we sell off, or we sell off from here, and 478 is the top. It's all going to be relative, and it all depends on any news that ha comes out over the weekend and how we end up opening on Tuesday. So I, I want to see the pre-market first before determining anything. I'm going to skip over to Tesla for now because I want to talk more about Tesla later on. Just a few more tickers. SoFi looks bearish. Had a big break to the downside, especially after the bank earnings that came out. Uh, some guidances were not that great for certain companies, such as Bank of America. And on the daily time frame, we're basically trying to hold at the 200 EMA. So we're at critical support right now on SoFi. If we lose 7.86, it's going to be selling off a lot more. I mean, we have this imbalance down here. Uh, we can be approaching 7.5 very soon if we end up losing this. You could even interpret this as a head and shoulders like structure. Kind of looks like one. So it looks bearish, if I'm going to be honest with you. But for confirmation, watch the 200 EMA, see if we hold this on the daily. If we lose this, more downsides coming. If you hold it, it could try to hold up around that range. Russell 2000 looks a little bearish on the daily, but still kind of in this range. It's been stuck shopping for the last couple of days. If you want to be bearish on this thing, 
I want to see this thing basically lose critical support around uh, basically 188. If you want to be bullish, you want to see it break and hold above 195, and then we have a gap to fill above. So do we get one more push up to fill this gap and then reject, or we just reject from here? It all depends. Um, you could argue that this kind of looks like a head and shoulders. That's a little slanted. Ooh, not looking the best, but it depends on if we end up losing 190. So this is looking a little bearish on the IWM, also 2000 for a temporary move to the downside. Uh, so be a little bit careful with that. As far as Apple goes, uh, we have a slight looking, there could be a flag developing on here. This could be forming like a little bear flag, but just to be safe, uh, let's see how it reacts to 188 because it could try to push a little higher towards that resistance and we'll see if it breaks or not. If it breaks 188, it's going to be bullish. It's going to try to fill this gap up to 192. It could attempt to do so, or at least get close. If we fail to break 180 and we end up rejecting, look at, for it to come down towards 182. We'll be watching that very carefully as well, so we'll see if we, we kind of move in one or the other direction. Uh, I'm going to skip over just a couple of them. I'll be talking more about these later. I'm sure people want to hear about it in video, but it's basically the same analysis as before. The same levels I called out earlier. I, I'm going to pull up trading view for this. On NVIDIA, you know, 550 is going to be a nice resistance. If we break that, hey, we could push a little bit more. If we fail to do so, we're going to be range bound and we might just be stuck in this range. If we lose 542, we could turn a little bit more bearish. So there's always that possibility. Uh, one could argue that NVIDIA is getting a lot tighter. So if you draw out like a, you know, a little pennant over here, that's kind of forming. It's getting very tight. So our big move is going to be expected very soon, going into next week, especially. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how we open on Tuesday, but it's getting very tight, basically. And a big move should be coming. Uh, we'll watch which way it breaks. Lose. 542 and we start sinking we could turn a bit more bearish break 550 hey we could turn bullish so i'll just wait and see um for microsoft microsoft in my opinion still holding up i called out yesterday it was looking bullish it still is holding up watch 390 see if we could try to break that as well still on a nice uptrend it still looks kind of strong so it could try to push a little higher but be a little bit careful because the whole market could have a negative effect on it later on so I think it could back test 390. We'll see if it rejects or not, but that's going to be a big test that's coming. For AMD, we called downside yesterday on this. I told you there's going to be a risk of downside. Uh, we, it dropped a little bit. There was a slight move to the downside. Going to be looking for a push down towards 144. If that fails us, 141 is coming. If you want to be bullish, you want to see it break 150. It does look a little bit more bearish, if anything. For the VIX... This thing is still indecisive, not really doing too much. If it breaks 13, we could turn a bit more bullish, but so far we're kind of stuck right now. It's not really a whole lot that's going on. Coinbase looks really, really weak, uh, quite weak right now. We just lost the daily 50 EMA. And I'm going to be watching basically, let me just look at this level. I, I was looking at it. Uh, it was around 126. That's going to be our next target if we lose 130. We look, <laughs> excuse me, we look really weak on the daily. So I'll be watching this as well. Yeah, it looks kind of weak. We could be looking for 126 to 117. So it looks bearish right now. There might be more downside coming. Amazon attempted to bounce, but now it's kind of rejecting. So with this bearish divergence and this liquidity grab, we might see Amazon retest 152 and then try to bounce. Uh, but I could see a little bit of a sell-off coming. Uh, but that's it for now, guys. I'll be breaking down more of these stickers later on. As for Meta, uh, this will be the last one I kind of like talk about. Meta is looking kind of flat right now. It is still technically on an uptrend. Uh, there's a bearish divergence that's starting to develop, but there's no sign of it breaking down yet. We're on a very strong uptrend for now. We're having a very, very nice looking uh, push. I mentioned to you guys that if we broke resistance at this high right here at 374, we could get very close to 380, could get a little closer to 380 before it rejects. So there's still some life in meta. I wouldn't necessarily say it's bearish. Could push a little bit more, but watch resistance at 380. Anyways, that's it for this one. I want to keep this one kind of short. So hopefully I, my analysis of these few tickers was kind of helpful. Hope you guys have a great Friday and peace out.